So how easy is it going to be for us to make this Batman site? Well, adding 3D objects on your site is a sure way of adding interactivity and immersiveness. Even better is when you combine this with scrolling the 3D objects as illustrated on some of these prototypes and sites by some of the talented and industry leaders in this space. Well, before AI comes and takes our jobs, let me show you how you can do this. So first, we start by installing the necessary dependencies, and that is React, React 3 Fiber, and the Theater Studio. And then in our app.jsx, we are just going to be importing the necessary packages that you're going to be needing from React, from React 3 Fiber, and from Theater.js. I'm going to be explaining that in a short while. Now, we're going to be importing the studio in our dev, dev environment, and then we're going to also add the project. Now, just to explain to you, the project is basically like the house of everything that is going to be animated inside Theater.js. And then objects, objects are basically anything that can be animated. Now, the project houses the objects, and these objects will have properties. For instance, in our case uh, with 3.js, uh, the objects, which is a 3D object, will have things like the position, the scale, and the rotation. And then you will see later on that when we change the position, maybe on the X, Y, or Z, it will be affecting the object in real time. And then we have the sheets, and this sheets is just a collection of the objects. So we can have sheet instances. We're not going to be talking about sheet instances in this video, but it's good to know sheet instances is like an instance of a collection of objects. So a sheet can have several objects and instances uh, of the sheet. Then we have this sequence, and this is the sequence editor where we are going to be adding the keyframes in specific points during the scrolling. And then we have extensions, which we are not going to be talking about. We're going to be talking about those maybe in a later video. So if we are now to move on to um, what we need to cover, you'll see that we have a project, and then we're going just to pass the project onto our world, which we will create later. And then we are going to be adding the environment uh, with a preset of studio, and this is going to light up our scene and several other effects. And then talking about the model that you're going to be using, you're going to be using this Hatch Batman model from Sketchfab. I'm going to be putting the link in the description below so that you can go on ahead and download it. It comes already animated, so that removes a lot of the work for us. So I'll be putting the link in the description. You can go and download it. So if this is our folder structure, after downloading it as a GLB file, we will be putting it in the public folder. And then we are going to be running this command. We will navigate to the public folder and run this command so that we can transform our model into a much usable model. Then after running the command, you'll see several of these, of these generated files. So we'll move the Batman to JSX into our world folder. Now moving to the index in the world folder, we will start by importing the necessary dependencies. And then as I explained, we will need a sheet and sheet is just an instance of the objects that you are going to um, to be using. We then go on ahead and add the scroll controls from Dre with pages 8, which is equal to like 800 VH and the other parameters for easing. We then add the sheet provider with a sheet we created to provide context to its children. Now, in the blocks is where the magic happens. Here, we link the position of the sequence pointer of the sheet to the scroll position. Moving on to the Batman.jsx file that was generated for us, we are going to be animating the model using the animations that came with it. So first, we are going to move on to the use effect where we are going to set the effective time scale to 0.4 just to make the animation a little bit slower, and then we play it. Then we are going to give our model a theater key of Batman for the theater. And then in our index.css, we're just going to be using Stalewind to give it some little styling. And with that, you should be having this. Now, currently, everything is already set up. And you can even see that we can scroll up and down. 
And now the remaining thing is just to add the keyframes in the sequence editor. Now if you don't already see the theater editor, you can press Alt and Backslash to access it. And then you can press the Batman to access its props. And you will see that when I change the props, the model is going to be affected. For instance, I'm rotating it on the x-axis. Or you can play around and see how it affects the model. Now I'm just going to be inputting um, the values that I already calculated earlier. And so I'm going to fast forward here. Now, if you want to access the sequence editor, um, you're going to need to press this dot here and it will bring up the sequence editor. Now you need to scroll to the top so that the sequence aligns with the, edit, the, the scroll position and the zero, and then you press it again to register the keyframes. Now we are just going to go straight to the bottom um, to register the keyframes at the bottom. And again, I'm just going to be uh, inputting the already computed values that I had already experimented with earlier. But you can go on ahead and experiment with your own values for the various positions you want your model to be at the end position. So I'm just going to be putting in the already calculated values that I had found earlier. Then you also need to press the button again. Press it only once. If you press it twice, I don't know why the sequence disappears. Just press it once again. And you'll see that the keyframes has been registered. Now, if you try to scroll, you'll see that the animation is pegged to our scroll. So that's how easy it is to create these kinds of animation. Now, I know I may have been a little bit too fast in this video, so I'm going to be putting some resources below where you can learn more. And I'm also going to be putting links to the various resources like the docs and the 3D model I've used. Now, if you like this sort of content, you should consider subscribing and following me on Twitter to learn more. I'll also post most links to various projects that I've done before, like the source code. So be sure to follow along over there. And you can also try and recreate sites like this. Okay, bye-bye.